You have got to be kidding me. Well, Henrik, do you ever think of how your life would be different <laughs> if it wasn't the New York Rangers who took you in the seventh round? 205th overall. Yeah. I knew I was not going first round. Uh, I was not good enough for that. But seventh round, yeah, it was late. It was late. But uh, I always talk about that as a moment where I knew myself I had so much work to do to prepare myself to even be considered to play in the, in the league. So in a way, it was kind of a blessing. You know, it just made it even more important to, to dial it in and, and, and put in the work. Welcome to the 2000 National Hockey League Entry Draft. I definitely remember the draft day as, as a little stressful towards the end when you're sitting there. But Joel, my brother, was ranked uh, higher. So you guys were there because of Joel? Uh, pretty much. Joel had a lot of meetings booked, so I think I only had one meeting booked, and that was probably a favor to my agent. <laughs> I don't think they really wanted my, my interview, so. When he's here, might as yeah, well talk yeah, to exactly. him. Yeah, exactly. And it would have been Glenn Sather. I yes. Guess. Yeah, so mm -hmm. do you remember meeting Glenn? What I do remember is meeting him in Gothenburg the year before I moved to New York. I'll never forget it. He came to watch me play that one game, and I had a great game, so I felt very confident. I'm like, yes, I, I think I had a shutout, and we went out wow. for dinner after that game. So this is season 04, 05, towards the end of the dinner. He looked at me and he said, so do you think you're ready for New York? And that phrase, it was almost like, okay, I, I need to prepare myself. Because when someone say, are you ready for New York? It's like, what does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. in a way. So your rookie season, who is the leading scorer on the Rangers? A yager. What do you remember about him? Talk about passion for hockey, like just the way he trained. And as a kid, of course, you watched the top guys on the team. And he was not only top guy on the team, he was top guy in the league. And my first yager moment was already in camp when we went up to West Point for this, like a military camp or team building and checked the list for who was going to be my roommate. And it was yager. I couldn't believe I called my brother right away. It's like, do you know what? <laughs> guess, what? <laughs> guess what? My room is Jeremy Yager. He couldn't believe it either. It's Yager all alone in front pass. Score! Michael Nylander! You played with Michael Nylander, and then you played against his son, yeah. William Nylander. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did that kind of strike you when it's like, OK, I know I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, at that point, you just start to realize you're, you're getting older, because uh, I do remember play a lot of street hockey with them. With William. With William. And his and, brother. And Alex. Yeah. yeah. You could see, I mean. Like, could you see it as a you kid? Could see, that well, these, the... there's so much that needs to happen from that point, but the fact that both of them had extreme talent from that to what they're doing now, that, that, that's a long way to go, but it, it's cool to see. Another of your Ranger teammates was Brendan Shanahan who, of course, now is the president of the Toronto Maple yeah. Leafs. We saw him as an NHL executive before that. Just curious, like, as a player, did you see that maybe that was the direction he was going to go? Or what kind of a, what kind of a guy was yeah, he? Yeah, he, he was such a smart player. And the way he spoke, he understood the game. He understood the, the mindset of the group. He, he was a leader, for sure. Shannon was one of the guys I would hang out with a lot when he played here in New York. I always gravitated towards older guys and, and to learn from and, and discussions. And, and so like we, about yeah. hockey, about life, beyond both, everything. Both. It was just fun to, on the road, at dinners. He was a great guy to be around. I wonder, is there one player that you faced during your career that you always had the toughest time <laughs> stopping? Does anyone come to mind? There's two. Oh, two. Two. Do tell. To play against the best players, it's always a great challenge. And to face Crosby and Ovechkin throughout my entire career, and we did it a lot because mm -hmm. same division, and they were tough because they were so good. But at the same time, it was fun. It was a great challenge. You rise to the occasion when you know you're going. Well, to I still game. gave up goals, but uh, <laughs> but I think I stopped right them a lot the too. Mm -hmm. But it was always, you know, exciting, nerve-wracking when you go up against the best. It's a great measuring stick. Like, can, can you do it as a group? Can you do it personally? Playoffs, regular season, we faced them a lot. So those two guys stands out for many reasons. I have so much respect for both of them and what they've accomplished throughout their careers. Crosby, you never really knew what to expect. The way he was shooting the puck, 
he would pass it or back and for and so it was hard to figure out had to be ready for anything Olvi, i knew what was coming and still, and still it was hard it was no still it was hard what, yeah it's like there's it's that of... one time we're from the circle wow your career as a ranger comes to an end in 2020 just the weirdest of years for for so many reasons and then you sign with the washington capitals it just kind of walk us through how it all ended and yeah. you're getting ready for a new start in Washington. I mean, that 12 months was, uh, it was a lot going on in my life. And, and I remember, yeah, to a point with COVID and, and playing my last game for the Rangers. It, it was a lot to take in. You sort of saw the writing on the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And how were you with that? Uh, it was a lot of emotions. I guess. A lot. The only uh, team you'd ever known. Yeah. It was, at that point, I didn't know what was going to come next, if, uh, if I was retiring or playing more hockey. But, you know, I, I was in a good place mentally, though. I have worked a lot on, on just finding gratitude in so many things, the years I have with the Rangers and how much they given me over the years. And so I, I was in a very good place. And a month or two months later, I start skating. And I just wanted to see. You know how much I love the game. And yeah, how much you still had left yeah, in you. Does it make sense to to continue this somewhere? And in my mind, you know, the the game, the love for the game was so so strong that I wanted to continue. And and the Washington Capitals <laughs> come calling. Yeah. How did that come about? Oh, um, you know, I, I had a list of, of many teams that you would be interested in going to. Yeah, and and when everything was said and done. The team that scored the highest was Washington. Hey, a team with Alex Ovechkin is not a bad place to go. They had a great team, great players. Um, you know, I had an opportunity to go there and practice a couple of times before everything went south. Uh, but Yes, uh, well, I, I, <laughs> I do want to talk about that. You're there, you're preparing to play your first season as a member of the Washington Capitals. Yep. And then? And, um, I mean, that fall, we, we did a lot of checkups with my heart, and then I always thought I was going to play, but in the end, that, that was not the case. It kind of came back uh, worse than we thought, and then things happened pretty quickly. And what was the condition that you had? So it was a um, leak, my, my valve in my heart was leaking, and my aorta was, was growing too much. So there was a lot of different things going on. The pressure in my heart was tripled, then like a year earlier. So the decision then is made, yep. we need to fix your heart. It was just crazy uh, when it happened, but I was very calm and it was- You were? I was very calm, very. Why, do, why I, do you think? It was just one of those things where, okay, I need to fix this yeah. and get back on the ice. And get back on the ice, yeah. that's the key. Oh uh, yeah, uh, so it was almost like, like any other injury and even if it wasn't, um, uh, that's kind of how I approached it. And I knew I was in good hands too. But yeah, of course it was scary. It was, uh, I wasn't sure how things would be coming out of that one. It was a long six hour surgery. Uh, but after that, I started a couple weeks later, small workouts and you stay in touch with doctors and you start feeling better and better. And, yeah, back on the ice after yeah, how seven, long after? seven weeks. Seven weeks seven, after open weeks, heart surgery, yeah, yeah. you are back on the ice. No high shots, just, <laughs> oh, I was just, oh, I was wow, just moving. I was just moving around and- And, and how, how did that feel? It was incredible. I loved it. I just feel like, uh, okay, this might work actually. At what point though, is it determined? Um, you know what? This is Maybe. like three, three months out. I'm um, about to join Washington yep. and, and go play, and then I have a setback with inflammation around my heart. Uh, so eventually, that that's what led me to retiring. It was not the surgery; it was the inflammation that I caught three over three months from the after surgery. I tried to come back later that fall, but it just uh, it didn't work. So then, the decision was made, and uh, it was time to move on. Is it easier when the decision is kind of made for you than you having to decide, oh, should I risk this? Yeah. Should I try going back into an NHL net again? 
it was still hard, but sitting here now, I definitely know that I made the right decision because it's been a slow process of trying to come back to 100%. So that makes me feel good about the decision. I remember at the, that point though, it was like, oh, should I wait it out? Should I try to come back, try different medicine? And how are you today? Are, are you 100%? Are you, um, how, do, how do you feel? It's been a slow process with inflammation. They told Still. me it could take up to four years. Uh, it's been two and a half years since the inflammation and it's been on and off. Um, I start training a little bit and then it comes back and then you're back on meds again. And so now, uh, now I'm back to training again. We'll you see, are now. We'll, yeah, I started a couple months ago again and, and I try to take it slow, not push it too, too much. Uh, I feel really good. Well, you're a part of that legendary group of people now. Do you think it'll really hit you when you get to Toronto? Probably. I had this amazing experience here in New York a year and a half ago when they retired my jersey. And you have an opportunity to share that moment with friends and family. And same thing now with, with the Hall of Fame. To bring in people that meant a lot to me and, and to share that moment is going to be incredible.